you're good directions, right? Well, Mike, your brother, are you ready to get her on the road? I mean, you guys have been waiting 60 years for this, right? <laughs> I mean, we got to think about it. Right. <laughs> well, first of all, we'd like to thank everyone for coming to, to witness this. Brother John and Brother Gil, it, it is a big deal. And we thank you for coming in and checking it out. Uh, we hope we don't mess up because they won't let us live it down. Okay? So we'll do the very best we can for you. All right? And with that, Brethren, we pause in our deliberations for the purpose of paying a tribute of respect to brethren who have served in the ranks of the Masonic fraternity for a period of three score. The years of man are readily divisible by the symbolic number three. Youth, the springtime of life, when with vision and energy, the attainment of useful knowledge is planned. Manhood, bring to fruition the visions of youth by performing our duties to God, our country, our neighbor, and ourselves. Maturity, the time for relaxation, contemplation, and retrospection. The period of time that from the experience of the past, we were able to give counsel, advice, and guidance for the building of every good and laudable service for the perpetuity of Freemasonry. It is, the it is in the recognition of this phase of life, maturity, to which we are now directing our attentions. Brother Gilbert H. Thompson and Brother John A. Winter, Jr., past master. Having attained this distinction, I congratulate you that the brethren may know of your Masonic affiliation. The secretary will read from your records. Brother Gilbert H. Thompson entered on March the 11th, 1952, passed on April the 8th, 1952, and raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason on May the 13th, 1952. John A. Winter, Jr., past master, entered on January the 17th, 1956, passed on February 24th of 1956 and raised to the degree of Master Mason on March 24th of 1956. Virtual Master of Lodge number 537 from St. John's Day, December 27th, 1972 through St. John's Day, December 27th, 1973. Thank you. The Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, recognizing this Masonic maturity presents a 60-year service emblem of gold. Brother James A. O'Connor, District Deputy Grand Master, representative of the Grand Master, will on his behalf present this emblem of service. Brother District Deputy Grand Master. My brothers, 60 years ago, you obligated yourselves to be true and faithful brothers of the craft, to observe with diligence your duties to God, your country, your neighbor, and yourself. For 60 years, you have labored to spread Masonic light and knowledge. And having reached this maturity, that is especially recognized by the Great Worshipful Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. In recognition of your 50-year service in the Masonic fraternity, the Great Worshipful Grand Lodge has seen fit to prepare and bestow upon you an emblem of gold by virtue of the authority in me vested by the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted masons of Pennsylvania, and Brother Robert T. Dietz, Right Worshipful Grand Master, I will present to you the Pennsylvania Grand Lodge Emblem of Gold as a visible token of its fraternal love and grateful appreciation. Gil, come up front. Thank you. 
there. I think I'll be as good as that pretty girl, though, but I'll get you up there. <laughs> supposed to wear white gloves while I do this but I will tell you and I'm going to be honest with you they'll be stuck to their lapel pin if I do do that <laughs> or their emblems will be on the floor line and I don't want to do that either okay <laughs> you know I, I had that helper for this but you know what I'm going to do it myself if you don't mind oh I'm, I'm happy to have you do that okay well, that's good Brother John, there's your sixth year. It's pretty nice. Isn't it? You know what, my brother? It's just pretty nice that you've stuck with us for 60 years, too. And you've led our lodge. We don't, we don't forget those things, God. Thank you. Brother Gil. Happy again to pin you. <laughs> What's ironic, folks, is I gave each of these wonderful men their 50 year emblem. Also, I was called into service two years ago again to be our district deputy grandmaster of our district, which gave me a very unique opportunity to be able to do this for brothers 10 years later, and I just think it's wonderful. <laughs> now, I'm not going to give you a certificate yet, okay? Because it's got something a little special to it. This is Grandmaster Deeks' tent for his term. The only way this tin is received is in the presence of the right person of Grandmaster. But I will tell you, my brother, me, being his representative, and he, giving his district deputy grandmaster's permission, is allowing us for his 50, 60, 70, and 75 year members that we are allowed to also present them with his him. So, there you be. You know what? We keep this up, you know what's going to happen. You're going to look like you belong with French Foreign Legion. <laughs> <laughs> You earned every bit of them. How about it? I think so. I think so too, brother. <laughs> Bring up something on that. And also, brothers, you're 60 years of death. Super, what should I say, garb that you guys came. Don't they look like a million dollars? Really. Right? And, and I want to thank you. It's really an honor. Please and, you, uh, and, and 60 years. Now, the, the second thing that, that I'd like to comment on, and there's three, is the, the lodges in Pennsylvania 
enable a person to belong to two lodges. So I belong to Lodge 700 in State College, but also I was raised in a lodge in Philadelphia, in the Masonic Temple, and so I belong to two lodges. And there's also some changes that you can pass the word that today a Mason can be into, go into a Masonic Lodge at 18 years of age. So that in, in state college, you've got PhD candidates. I think the master of the current master of lodge is finishing, finishing his PhD. And college students. And this is the growth of young people in the Masonic Lodge, not only in Pennsylvania, but worldwide. It's really a wonderful growing organization that that as brothers all over the world. And one thing that each of you at least know is what City Hall in Philadelphia looks like. Billy Penn on the top, everybody, if you haven't been there, you know about it. Mm -hmm. The fascinating thing, in 1897, that building was built, and Billy Penn, the height of Billy Penn, was the highest building in the world. I spoke in the world like, wow, you look at it today. <laughs> but at 25 years before that, a neighbor across the street had built a big building, or laid the, 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 the stone, stones, uh, and, and 25 years ago, the Masonic Lodge was built or started. And those of you who are not aware, that in that lodge, in the museum, there's a, a memento of a gentleman who belonged to the Masonic Lodge. And as those of you that are aware, Masons wear aprons. The apron of this famous Mason is in the, the lodge in Philadelphia. And I think you all know him as our first president of the United States, George Washington. And you go, oh, wow. Now, the third thing I have to mention is that, that's in my pocket. On the way back, you're going to go by the Sheets store, and they have a $3.99 milkshake it's on sale for a dollar ninety-nine. <laughs> I had one yesterday. It's, it's really good. <laughs> that's, that's, Brother Jerry, you heard that. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. What do you think, Brother John? Well, a lot has happened in that period of time. And as it was, I probably was more likely to get the 60-year pin and uh, notification than I would have if I had joined at a later age. Because I was just 21. And you had to be at least 21 back then. And uh, I had finished a number of years in the order of DMLA, so I knew uh, a bit about the Masonic organization. And with my father's help and his, uh, uh, his element that worked for him, uh, folks being Masons, saw to it that I got started and got moving around. But uh, it was Hiram Lodge in Altoona that I was raised. And uh, then I was convinced by local people here in this area that belonged to Old Fort Lodge to uh, remit, and um, I think in those days, if uh, you were to remit and then you weren't approved by the lodge that you uh, sent your petition to, you could be a mason without a lodge. That's correct. <laughs> you took big ammo those days. <laughs> it, like, it, it worried you a lot, but uh, as it turned out, I got to be a member of Old Fort Lodge 537. And uh, 
what persuaded me was the, the guys in the, that I worked with and uh, knew uh, had that way you could go through the chairs and maybe be a forceful master to work out. Well, lo and behold, it did. And uh, it's a fine lodge, and uh, I understand, although I haven't been there lately, that they have just renovated it a bit. And uh, I'm going to try and get down there. I want to see that. Beautiful. So I, uh, I too, thank you all for coming tonight and witness this. And uh, I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, brother.